Hello everybody. I want to bring up a little bit more detail into how I connected this GPS receiver that's to this SES Pactor modem. Uh, previously I showed how this GPS was connected to this device that I made to get the NEMA data for the GPS into the SES modem. So what this is, this is an interface. It provides power to the GPS and it provides an output to the SES Pactor modem. This is an old mouse that I harvested. It's about 20 years old. It's useless to me. Nobody really uses USB mice, especially with this wire that's not really useful. But for me, it was useful to harvest this part right here, which provides power to a board which then I can connect to this PS2 connector and I'm able to connect up the output to the SES. So the way this particular GPS works is it has a PS2 type connector, which is a really old connector and something that irritates me with some of the uh, technology for radio equipment is they're still using serial type connectors rather than USB. That's what it is. It, it doesn't matter. Anyways, the pins on here, one through six, one, two, three, four, five, six, correspond to ground for pin one, five volts of power, and then an RX, which is an input to the GPS, and a TX, which is an output for the NEMA type connect data. And that's what goes out to this SCS modem. So over here you have ground and NEMA in. So basically what I've done is pins 1 and 2 are connected to this USB connector inside of here. So when it's connected, the PS2 is connected in here, it will provide power to the GPS. And then all I did was solder a couple wires together. Uh, the input wire coming from this PS2 connector, which is pin 5, out to here, which is that middle pin right there. And then the ground, which is pin number one, is soldered to a ground on here, and then that ground connects into the modem. So it's a pretty simple connection. There's really not a lot of complexity in here other than trying to get the wires and everything combined inside of this small space and sealing it having a piece of aluminum here for this PS2 type connector, which I put in here. This is a very hard to find part right here. This I got from Adafruit. And the reason why I say it's hard is that all the pins in here have a wire that's connected to it. Not a lot of the PS2 type connectors have the wires connected to it, which makes it much more difficult if you try to go out and buy one of your own that's electrically connected but not all the pins are connected that that's an issue so i purchased something like this before thinking it would work but it only had like two or three of the pins and not the ones that i needed connected to it so out of fruit great to have this part the connectors for the scs modem I created from screw type terminals. I don't really like these connections, but that's what I get. And here's the, the GPS on the right and the SCS on the left. As you can see, they're reversed. So I labeled them over here. We connect this into here. And then that's going from the GPS, this SCS and GPS. So that's the GPS side of the wire. This is the SCS side of the wire. So this connects into the modem like this, and then that provides the data to the modem. And then all that's required here is connecting the PS2 connector, making sure that you have it lined up properly to the circuit. That's pretty simple. And then you just find a USB port which I have one on the back of the modem 
but that USB port on here only provides power for a couple minutes to the GPS and then it shuts down. So I find that it's just easier to connect this to you know, a battery or some type of five volt source, you know, something that has a USB input on it, like an old phone charger, anything you can find that supplies five volts for USB. So it's pretty simple to connect, really not that more complex. It was kind of a pain to build this, but hey, you know, that's what people do with uh, these types of radios. These screw, type, uh, screw terminals are really odd to me. Um, I think that SCS could probably modernize a little bit, maybe allow for a USB connection from some of these puck type connectors, you know, to go into here. That would be really nice. Um, but this works, you know, it's a serial port getting more and more rare. The GPS itself is very small and it is quite easy to use. It uses a lot less power, uh, which is really nice. And it has an almanac in there that stores the GPS data for the next three days since I unplugged it just now. So, you know, that's okay. It's nice to use. It's small. It's magnetic. So it has a little bag magnet on the bottom. I wouldn't expect that to hold it down very well on top of a car, but it will hold it onto a metal surface. This part, the only thing that bothers me about this is that it is not something that I can get off the shelf. I had to build it. Um, that is an issue for me. I prefer things that come with support. And if anybody's wondering what the shiny tape is, that is HVAC tape. I had a roll of it. It makes it nice to seal. I'm not trying to shield it electrically or for RF purposes, but it's nice to have it shielded anyways. It's not, I'm not going to introduce RF into this modem since all these components here, all the connectors are optically shielded. So it's not a big deal. Or I should say optically coupled or disconnected or, you know, there's on this side of the connection, there's an optical circuit that connects it to the rest of the modem. That's hard to conceptualize, I guess. So that's it. Old mouse GPS. This is a network cable that I pulled out some wire and I like the way it's stranded together. So it works pretty well for me. I kept it short because I don't want bus errors and then the PS2 type connector. So that's it. If anybody has any questions, just feel free to comment on the channel.